Hello, this is Michael with Mouthpack. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to be um, putting together a engine, uh, air-cooled Volkswagen engine from a long block um, all the way to um, getting it ready to start. Um, I'm calling this uh, 1641 because it says 1641cc engine uh, rebuild uh, 04022021. Um, and this is part one. Uh, just putting together the engine ready for rebuild. Um, so um, there's parts and pieces that you, you're going to need, but I think the best way to do is uh, watch the video and take notes as you do that, um, and then you'll get, be able to get all the parts and pieces that you need. Uh, thanks so much for watching today, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and then like the video, and then share with, uh, with others. Um, that'd be great. Um, and let's get started here. Here's the engine. I I lost the footage of putting on the other parts and pieces that I put on here. I apologize. Um, the cylinder 10 that's over the pistons and cylinders. That sometimes, if you buy brand new ones, um, you got to kind of modify the 10 a little bit to fit um, your engine. Um, Every one's different where you have to cut and and everything but um, surprisingly this these fit pretty good um, I only had to cut near the um, where the dipstick goes so when you're when you're putting together your engine you want to make sure that the intake uh, manifold is loosely on so um, as soon as I put the um, in castings on the intake manifold, I, I leave them. I don't tighten up the screws. And I like to put the screws kind of underneath. Um, some of them are above, but I personally like to put them underneath. It just makes more sense to me. Um, less dirt um, able to uh, accumulate in there. And I think it just kind of looks better for overall for the engine look. So I do, however, I tighten the 13 millimeter uh, nuts that are on the in, in castings that connect to the heads. I, I, I make sure those are nice and tight. Hand tight, but not too tight. I've never had one fall off before. Next, I put the carburetor on the intake manifold. There's two nuts and two washers. Be sure to put a fresh carburetor gasket that goes in between the carburetor and the intake manifold. I just hand tighten these as well. Uh, pretty tight, not, not too tight. I don't want to break any bolts, so I, I tighten them really snug now this next one is uh, interesting the new fan shrouds don't have um, holes for the uh, coil so after I'm bolting this uh, generator on in onto the uh, fan how fan shroud I am going to be drilling holes for, I guess I, I put bolts in there to um, install the coil bracket so I can actually put the coil on the fan shroud. Like again, this is an aftermarket fan shroud. These four bolts that I'm bolting the generator 
and fan housing to the fan shroud. Those are 10 millimeter studs. Here is the uh, you know, marking out the holes, and I'm going to be drilling holes in the fan shroud so the bolts that I bought can go through. I just went down to the hardware store and bought some bolts and nuts and um, washers to install this. So I, I go uh, and I drill. On the part that you see small holes with a kind of a I want to call it a step down drill head or drill head um, you'll see here shortly when I drill these two holes in the back so what's nice about this type of drill bit is it has a nice clean um, cut um, I'm drilling these um, holes larger so I can actually put a socket through it be, so I can um, hold the nut or bolt, excuse me, as I install the, um, so I hold the nut on this side with the socket, and then on the other side, I have a, um, a nut that I put on, and then I tighten everything down. And so I put the bolt in, and then a, with an, a washer on the, um, in this picture the left side and then put it push it through the hole and then I put a, a washer and a nut on the uh, finished side of the fan shroud and I tighten it up there's enough um, meat so I can put another washer and nut um, in between the first washer and nut that I put on and so the the coil is going to be stepped away from the actual fan shroud just by a little bit. Um, someday I will be able to figure out a different way to do this, but I think this is um, so far the best way for me to do it um, because I can still remove the coil um, when the fan shroud's in the car and not have to worry about uh, removing um, the fan shroud or the whole engine to try to get to the nuts, or excuse me, the bolt heads on the other side of this fan shroud. There's the nuts. And then now I'm putting the fan shroud with the generator on the engine. Um, it goes, the generator should fit nice and snug against the generator stand at the oil filler area. There is the coil bracket. Just kind of test fitting it, make sure it fits. Um, later on, I'm going to actually install the coil and tighten everything up. Now, after there's a couple different points where the fan shroud actually connects to the engine, um, three points to be exact, as far as um, this engine's concerned. There's, uh, like you see right now, there's two bolts that I install on either side, and then there is a strap which I'll be installing here pretty soon that goes around the generator and the generator stand. And then there's a bolt that um, tightens up that strap. And essentially that strap that you'll be seeing shortly, uh, there it is, um, holds the generator on the engine so there's no movement. And um, this is kind of critical because it is attached to your pulley belt, and which um, that pulley is main purpose is the crank pulley's main purpose is to um, turn this generator, generator or alternator if you have an alternator, and in turn um, turns the fan shroud fan. Um, so you know your your alternator generator actually charges your battery as you're driving and it's started and then as you are turning the generator generating the power to um, power the car plus charge the battery you're also cooling the engine by having
Next thing I'm going to do to the engine is put the oil filler neck on to the generator stand. Uh, this one's an aftermarket one with a nice little cap. Um, this one's okay. Uh, also, the stock one's okay as well. I'll fill up the engine with oil later on before I um, start it. And then don't forget your uh, generator, um, I want to call it dust cap. Oh, and this, this one is something that I have been doing for a while is I install anti-seize on the um, exhaust nuts, or excuse me, um, the nuts go on the exhaust studs. Um, so I put the anti-seize on the exhaust studs to make sure that when I later on, if I for some reason have to take off the exhaust, hopefully it'll be a little, be a little easier to remove. Um, this application for this engine, I'm putting some J-tubes on. And just remember that your intake manifold is loosely um, screwed on. And then um, currently I kind of put the nuts on the exhaust um, ports on the heads just uh, loosely to put it on there. Um, and then your muffler here, I could actually tighten up a little bit more um, than the J-tubes that I just put in. I just want to make sure I'm able to move the J-tubes into the proper areas for the muffler. And just uh, on the stock type applications, there are four, um, I put 10, million, 10 millimeter bolts through the intake riser, heat riser, and then um, I put it through the muffler. And then this particular muffler doesn't have um, threads in the actual muffler. And so I have to put the um, 10 millimeter bolt through the top part of the intake manifold bracket into the muffler side and then put a nut on the opposite side, which I'm doing now. And then I tighten with a, a 10 millimeter socket uh, holding the nut in place and then um, tighten, tightening up everything. And I like to do the left one first because that one is usually, especially on a um, stock exhaust, um, I believe that one's the stationary one. So I try to do the stationary one first and then I do the other one that moves. Um, if you've you know worked with a, a stock exhaust, you'll know what I mean. And then after the muffler's on and J-tubes are in the actual muffler pipes, then I'm able to tighten up the J-tubes at the, the head, uh, 13 millimeters nuts, two of them on the back sides of the head, two of them on the front sides. And then after that's all tightened up, then I take the clamps that go from the J-tubes to the muffler. Sometimes I have to um, take a rubber mallet and tap them a little bit to make sure they seat properly. Um, these J-tubes are a little smaller than the donut for the um, hose clamp or the pipe clamps that I've, I installed. So hopefully there's no exhaust leaks. Um, the other thing is to, after the exhaust muffler is done being tightened up, then you tighten up your um, rubber boots for your intake and end castings. Next, I take a wire, um, I usually use green, that goes from the um, electric choke on the carburetor to the idler cutoff valve to the positive side of the coil. So when I put the positive, or excuse me, the, the coil into the bracket here, then I'll be able to install the um, electrical components onto it. And I forgot to put this piece on, um, this 10 piece on before I put the muffler on, which is way easier to install. So um, there's two connection points. Um, the stock is usually a standard screwdriver head that is going to here, go into here, but I, I use a 12 or excuse me, 10 millimeter um, bolt instead of the stock application for the um, install of that pulley pin. 
So when I install the pulley, I usually put um, some sort of sealant, um, not sealant, but um, lubrication, which in this case, I use um, engine assembly lube, and I put it on the inside and outer side of the pulley to slip on to the crankshaft and the um, place where I need to put it on the actual engine. And this, because of the mufflers in the way, I am rotating the engine a little bit and then hitting with the mallet so I make sure I get everything plugged in. So this box and wrench, I'm going to tighten up the um, pulley. Um, this is after I'm putting a flywheel lock on the back um, so I know the engine is not going to move on me. If that's not the case, then oftentimes you could put a screwdriver or pry bar in between the pulley and the engine to make sure it um, stays put while you're tightening everything. And then I torque it down to, I think this was uh, 34 uh, PSI pounds per, sorry, pounds per uh, foot. The next thing is I'm going to install the, the belt. And I believe I had it take it apart a couple different times to make sure I get the right number of shims to get the right um, adjustment on the, the actual belt. And normally you could use a 10 or sorry, a 19 millimeter socket and then a f standard s screwdriver to tighten everything up. Sorry about the lack of um, you know, having the, not the, I want, I would like a, the camera to be up a little bit, but sorry about that. Um, so now I'm installing the spark plug wires. Remember the bolt pat, or sorry, the uh, firing order, uh, one, four, three, two. One is usually at, um, about, what is it? I think it's like uh, it's about four o'clock on the distributor. That's where number one is usually, and then you put uh, four, three, two, and then hook up the middle one to the coil, and then um, here are me putting in the oil into the engine making sure I get that in there I don't want to start it up without having oil in it I just don't want to destroy all the work I've done to create that the engine and have a problem with it so just remember three quarts of oil that's all it takes And after, after this uh, engine's, or after this video is done, um, this is part number one. Uh, part two is actually starting this engine. So I show you um, how I hook up my um, system and then start it and I have it run. And I, this is the first time running it. Um, there you go. There's the coil and tighten up the bolts. I remember that the positive and negative side of the coil I usually put marks on this side so I could actually see it when I'm trying to hook up everything um, the positive side gets the uh, wire that comes from the carburetor and then usually it comes from the battery as well and then negative side comes from the uh, condenser on the um, distributor and then next I'm going to be hooking up the fuel hoses for the fuel pump and when I install the fuel hoses for the fuel pump I usually take off the distributor cap because it's just easier to get to 
in all my years, I just never really liked how the fuel is right next to all the electrical components. So I try to get it as far away from that as possible. So here's the uh, engine all ready to start up. And like I said before, the um, part number two after this is me starting up the engine. And um, you can see how it runs and starts. And um, just keep in mind that um, to do that, you're going to need a um, gasoline source. You're going to need a battery. And then you're going to also need um, a starter to be placed on the engine so you can actually start it. And for me, this works out great because I can actually start the engine here at run, adjust anything if I need to, and make sure everything's working properly um, prior to installing in the engine. So uh, I hope this helped you out with uh, installing things onto your engine. Um, I know this is about you know, 20, 23 minutes or so, um, but it took me approximately um, three to five hours to actually install everything on this engine. Um, bulk majority of the work goes into the case and installing everything for the long block. And then this components above the, um, that long block takes um, no time at all. So anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, don't forget to um, subscribe to my channel and then like, and then watch my next video so I can show you how it starts and what it runs like and um, also um, share this video with those around you and then uh, thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day